Hello friends, you all are welcome to the very first session of learn test automation using Python. I'm recording this video, keeping all audience in mind. All audience means uh, I may have audience who are new to test automation. They are coming from manual and they want to learn or who already know automation. They are using Selenium, Java, or they're using UFT, or they're using Renorex, and they want to learn Python. So I'm creating this video for keeping all audience in my mind. So I'll be starting from scratch. And in today's session, I'll be talking about how we can download Python, how to download Python ID and start with. So here uh, I'm gonna use Python and the Python IDE that is called as PyCharm. So using those two, I'll be teaching how to work with Python, starting from basics to advanced. So let me start. So as soon as you type download Python, you're gonna get this link, download python, python.org. It's very simple, it's quite simple. Just click here, click on download Python, and Python will be downloaded in your, follow the steps, I'm not gonna show this because you can easily do this. And once you download this properly, then you have Python installed and you would be able to see this ideally. This this ideally comes to false with Python, but we'll not be using this for our practice purposes. We can use, but the, there is no point using this if you're gonna write your code in in, uh, in the, using different uh, ID, Python ID. So here you can see already I have PyCharm C installed in my machine. Just type install PyCharm and you'll get the detail. Right. So you can see this link download PyCharm Python IDE for professional developers. So click this link and I just wanted to show you one thing. So once you're here, you have two versions to download. One is professional and one is community. So you can go ahead with community perspective. If you want to spend money, if you're ready to spend, then go with download. But that is not required as of now, you can go with the community license. So I'll close it and go back. So once you install both Python and PyCharm, you'll have your icon. So I'm gonna open PyCharm. So this is PyCharm community 2019.1. And here, so I already have few projects already created, so I'm not gonna use that. I'll be creating, in case of you, if you have just installed you, this will be blank, so you can click on create new project. All right, so create new project. And you can give a name. Learn test automation Python. See, so you can see existing interpreter and these settings, uh, I'll be talking about these settings later. Uh, what is the actual uh, use of virtual environments and when you should use existing interpreter, whatever. So what, uh, let's use existing interpreter. And or I, sh I can create one here. Okay. So whatever the default option comes, you should go ahead with that. So whenever you install PyCharm, they are giving tip of the day. Every time you open, there's a tip. So you can close or if you want to read, you can read it. So let me close that tip here. You can see we receive few default folders, right? I'm gonna create one, one folder here. Right click, new, and then directory. Right click, new, and directory. And I'll just give this, I'm giving this name as test, so I'll give simple scripts. All right, okay. So this is the directory. Within this directory, you need to create a new Py, Python file. Right click new Python file and give a name. So let me give the name as introduction.
All right. So you are all set. So you have Python and PyCharm installed, and you are ready to write a very first script. So I'm not gonna use uh, what everyone use like print hello world this and that. So instead of doing that, let's pick a real life example. Let's pick something which you which you uh, which is gonna help you to learn, which is gonna help you to practice, right? So I, I'll not teach like okay, this is how we define variable, this is how we run loop or if else condition or this and that. So instead of doing that, I'll pick a simple, very simple example and we'll try to solve that. Okay. So uh let's say uh, uh this uh, we have uh, we have received marks for class 12 students there are 10 students in a class and we have marks of all so how we can store that in python so here you go i am defining a variable and variable name is my list and my list is equals to And my list is my list is equals to 23, 43, 56, 12, uh, 12, 34, and this and how seven one two three four five seven eight right so three, three six and four ten so total there are ten values in a variable and that variable is called my list so variable name is my list and that contains marks received by 10th student in that okay so if i need to print the marks uh, the very first entry from the list how i how i going to print so i'll be typing print my list zero print my list zero right click and run introduction so here you see the result came as 23 so what we have done so far so what you can store multiple values in a variable and if you want to access so you have to give first value of my list means my list zero so index starts from zero zero one two three four if you need the tenth number then you need to Put it nine and okay let me copy and few few more print statements here my list minus one let's see what happens there and let me run it wow so index starts from zero if you are uh, checking this from left hand side if you are checking this from right hand side index starts from minus one so minus one minus two minus three so this is minus nine and this is nine you're getting my point let me print not minus nine and nine right click run so my list uh, nine uh, tenth element of my list is 76 and my one two three okay uh one second should be eight actually all right so you can see we can access element from a list and this is the way okay so now you know how to grab any element from a list again if uh, i'm doing another operation i'm just doing temp temp is equals to my list two and print Temp. right click run and you can see 0 1 2 means this is the third element and you are printing this as a temp so why i am doing this because i am going to use all these uh, later in in this 
script. So that's the reason I am showing you if I need to fix something, how I can fix. Now I, I let me show you something which is coming defaults with the Python. That is, if I need to find the maximum number or who is uh, what is the maximum marks scored by any student? What is the maximum mark scored by any student? Let me make it uh, 86. So how to do that, right? So let's say you're defining a variable. So what I did, I just defined a variable. There is no need to declare. You can just give a name and then you can assign that to. So max is equals to, okay, or uh, let me say this. High score is equals to max of, max of what? My list. And now let me print high score. Right click and run. So high score, high score, uh, like the maximum scored by any student is 86 in this list. So what my next question is, next real life assignment is, can we write similar function? Can we write similar code? Because this is default, it's coming, max is coming default from Python. Can you write a code to find maximum out of this? Yes, we can. So we have to do that. That's the final goal of, of this session. So you have a list and you need to identify the maximum number of them. For that, we'll be using everything. We'll be using loop, we'll be using if else condition, we'll define variables. So everything comes together. So now you know how to define a list. You know how to define a variable. You know how to use existing functions. You, you just learn the print statement, how to access any element out of the list. Now the next point is how I can write uh, how to identify the maximum number out of this. So first you need to identify the logic. The logic I was talking about in the webinar that day, the programming techniques and all. So what I'm gonna do, I'll become, uh, okay, let's first print all this number, not one by one, using loop or, or something. So I'll be using while loop, <coughs> excuse me. while i is less than nine. So you know the maximum uh, number of element in this list are nine. So how, uh, that's why we kept is nine, but <clears throat> sorry. If you don't know how many uh, items are in the list, then, then you can find that too. So let, let me find that first. I can comment, to comment, you can put a hash sign there. So here, uh, again, length of list is equals to length my list. And then print length of list. Right click, run, and you see the 10. So total number of elements in this list are 10. So 10 means you will just, okay. and. Uh, Let me make it 10 and I, and how we run a loop. So I'm assigning zero to variable I because I want to learn while I is less than 10. So you can see there's a red. Okay, so while I is less than 10, this and print. my list i so what's gonna happen the value of uh, i you you if you know how loop loop works you know what what's gonna happen if not then uh, either let me know on the facebook group or on on the youtube video and uh, i may help you to explain how these loops work so here i is for the very first time the value of i is one so it's gonna oh, sorry zero so it's gonna print my list zero and then we'll increment the value of i by one and this is how we increment okay and next time value of i will be two and then the and three and then four and then till nine so right click and let me run how it goes 
all right so you can see Spread thing 10, 23, and then then this this is this, this everything. So this is how we can access. At least we are with the help of this loop. What we are doing, we are traversing through all the items of a list, starting from first element to last element. So now at least we can fetch the value, and now we can do operation. What operation I am going to do? I'll compare these two numbers, and I'll identify the max. Let's say I am comparing 23 with 43, and 43 is a greater number. Then I'll compare 43 with, with 56, and then 56 is a greater number. Then I'll compare 56 with 12, and again 56 is greater number, or max out of those two. Then I, I'll compare 56 with 34, again 56 is a greater number. Then I'll compare 56 with 86, now 86 will become the greater number. And so on, I'll keep checking till the end of the, the list and then I'll print the maximum. Okay, so I'm going to introduce another variable here. I am calling that as a max is equals to zero. Again, I am assigning max. So this loop will continue and I'll remove this print here and I'll check if my list of I is greater than max okay so try to understand means very first value is greater than max first time it's gonna true because your max is zero and your very first number is 23 if yes then and notice one more thing it's proper indention is there i cannot type if here i have already created another video for indention indentation so you cannot write anything here so you have to Follow the proper indentation here in, in case of Python. So if my list of first element of my list is greater than max, then if something is anything is greater than max, then I'll assign that value to max. So here it, it will come to max and keep this till the last element. If that element is not, then don't do anything. And at the end of the execution, Again, I have to go back to here and print maximum number out of list is 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 max. Right click and let me run introduction. Oh, there is an error. Okay, fix it. So you, can you see there? Type error can only concatenate str to str. Can only concatenate str to str and I was concatenating str with numeric. So that's why I got the error. So I am separating this by comma instead of plus symbol. Okay, right click and run. So maximum number out of list is 86. Let me reduce this to 70s. Uh, let me make it one. Okay, so now 76 should be should be the maximum. Right click and run 76. So see, they, so we what we did, we just created something similar to this. Max is already a defined. You can say function method in different language. They use different terminologies, but you can see you can write your own code. And I can put the same code in a function, and I can I can call that function as my fun, my uh, like my function. Okay, so this is how this is a loop, and I'm gonna put this in a loop. Uh, sorry, in a function, but I'll not do that now. Uh, I'll be covering those things when when talking about function that will be more complicated as of now. But what I'm gonna do now is so this you know you have a list how to fetch the elements how to print those uh, single elements and how to get max out of that. So there are two things which you should do now, you sh which you should practice and share the code snippets in, in FB group. And the very first one is print the minimum number. Out of list of 10 okay and the second is uh, 
the second is see i know most of you will be thinking oh it's easy i can do it even though you might have done all those programming in other language but do it because once you do you'll find the real error you will see how indentation works you see you you may you may be assuming in your mind but when you are using keyboard mouse and then writing code in and executing then the real challenge come so if you really want to learn then you have to practice you should you must practice if you just wasting you want to waste your time going through videos and all okay if you are smart enough then fine it's okay but practice is the key that i'll say i'll keep say because i have been teaching students since long and i, I have observed that even if i am not doing this practice i won't be able to explain you guys it's all in there my head but i cannot do until i practice even i am doing mistakes and the second one for second one what you are supposed to do so this is just uh, uh what say the the marks but uh, what i'm going to do now is instead of my list i'm going to name this as class underscore 10 so these are the marks class 10 math mark sheet or marks and i'm going to give the student name as well Let me put. Uh, if you want to comment more than one line, you can use this. You can start and you can end. Okay, so these are all comments. Class ten math marks with student name. Okay, so uh, or roll roll number whatever you uh, are comfortable to use with. So roll number one. comma and then i'll close this with the round bracket so this is a string so what we we have done now we have a list of this is the roll number 1 and for roll number 1 marks is 23 for roll number 2 uh, similarly you have a different marks so I, i'll i'll just delete all this and i'll uh, copy paste so that i can quickly replace with some other numbers control v control v control v that's enough so roll number 1 uh, marks is 23 roll number 2 marks is 33 roll number 3 marks is 63 roll number 4 Mark is twenty-two. Don't go with the literal meaning of the mark. No one scores that less. I'm just trying to give some number, random numbers. Well, number one, two, three, and okay, 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 okay. This is four, and and this is five. All right. Oh, the number fifty-five. Well, number five, and let's make it a good student line ninety-two. Okay. So now you need to find the maximum mark score. Uh, you need to print the roll number who scored the maximum mark. Here we have printed the maximum marks out of the list, but in case we have to print the roll number who scored the maximum marks. So that is the assignment for you. So you can print the minimum number out of the list of ten. what we practice here and the here so if you want me to do it now i can try to solve it but i would like you to do first okay let me uh, give you the solution here as well but uh, i'll suggest first try if it's not working then come to the solution okay so i can copy the same loop and uh, I'll print it here. Now, name of my uh, list is something else. Okay, but before I do this, right, I need to let let me explain you something some something else. I hope you have already tried, and now you're watching the second part. 
So not this one. Start hold on. Starting from here, control C. I'm coming to building, I'm defining a variable. Let me go here. It is a commented area. So I'll be here. So this is you can see I have defined that list again. And now to access the elements. So now what is this is the one element in this list. And that one single element has two parts. One is a string value, row number one, and another is the 23 is the marks received by that row number one. Right? So how to pick these values? Once you know how to pick this, you can simply write the logic. So print class 10 marks zero. Okay. And if you run, let me comment this also, otherwise it will bother us. Necessary. Let me right click and run. Syntax here, print, oh, parenthesis missing. See, this is what happened. That's why I'm asking you to practice. I just, I just missed that. But that should be part of, if you write code more and more, then you will learn all these things. Right click, run. So you can see, we are printing the very first element of, of this list. And the very first element itself contains two values, row number one and 23. So now how to print row number one and how to print 23. So again, you can use this zero and you can print one. Okay, so right click and run it. So you can see it, it's printing row number one and it's printing to 23. So now you know how to access those values and then you can run your loop to, all right. So now I'm, I can copy this, this loop as it is. And I'll comment these two lines or now the my, I can, Use this. Okay, so it's max and again at the end of this loop, I'll I'll be able to find the maximum. And let me print. And what is max? So I'm gonna run this. Let me comment this so that it's not printing anything. Comment, comment, and there is one more print somewhere here which is printing 10 the length. Okay. I'll I'll copy and paste the say piece of code and I'll I'll, I'll add, give in description so you can practice if you want. But I, I would suggest to write no, I'll not share. I'll share later once you practice. Okay, so let me execute this. So maximum number out of the list is 23, is it right? Is it right? 23 is the maximum? No. Then what happened? Then what happened? Okay. So, okay. So zero one means this. Zero, now one one means this and Two one means this, okay. So I is incrementing then if one second, one second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What happened? Let me check what happened, why this error came. So max is zero. If this is greater than max. So, okay, let me simply print uh, instead of, one second, let me simply print this. I'll just see what what's happening. Okay, so I'll just, I'm gonna print this instead of 
making calculations. So trend, class, then marks, and I is getting implemented. Right click, run. Okay, 23, 23, 23. So I is not, not getting incremented. I list of I. Every time I is, I is zero. So zero of one. Oh, see what mistake I did. I don't know whether you guys might have already noticed, but since we cannot this be this cannot be a hard coded. There should be a variable here. That's what is happened. It should be I instead of one. Oh, now we can see it's printing 23, 33, 23, 63, and 92. Now I can remove this line. So see, these are the logical mistakes, right? I, I, everyone, everyone may face here and there. Okay, why this happened? Why that happened? But you need to practice. Okay, now let me print the maximum. Okay, mm -mm -mm. now what I did? Okay, I didn't change this. I and click see all sort of mistakes I'm doing here. And run list index out of range okay see another mistake so once you do copy and paste these all are usual so you know what is the length of this uh, list is and this is five so you are going beyond means you have only five elements and you are trying to access 10 elements so i'm i'm gonna share this video as it is so that you know what kind of mistakes we do and if you're doing those mistakes, it's, it's normal, it's okay. When you're learning something, you'll do mistake. Without mistakes, no one learns. There, there might be some, some cases. Okay, so again, let me try. And this time we're right. So we are getting number, but now what we need, what is the requirement? We need the roll number, not the number. So we need, we know where, uh, which, value of the list is giving you the maximum but we need to print the roll number along with the marks so how to get that so you need to define one more variable max name or max roll number equals to this So whoever number is max, that row number is max row number. And now I'll copy, I'll paste. Roll number. And now, now then roll number will will should uh, should come, and that is max roll number. So let me run and see if it's printing or throwing any error. So roll number five scored the maximum marks that is ninety two. So here you see what we did. I I uh, I tried to explain so many things in in one thing instead of taking you from basics this and that. So you know what is list. List is nothing but the container which, which can contain more than one element and you can just separate that with the comma. Here you see another example of list. List contains uh, information of like in subsets you can see. So first value of list itself contain two values. What is this coming in this round bracket? I, I'll be explaining. There is a proper name for this variable type also. I'll be explaining in later videos. 
but yes you can see this is one set second set and that set itself contain values so how to access those values you try to implement loop you implemented if else if condition here not else only if condition and then you try to implement some logic so what i suggest now just repeat this you will be be familiar with the syntax you will be familiar with the kind of mistakes you are doing and uh, just try to do these before you you uh, watch the complete video because if you are doing by your own you will know the challenges and then you know the solution and i have not i am not going to remove all those failures here because you, you should know what kind of mistakes we do all right so thank you very much guys i i again ask you to practice 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 and you're going to listen this as many as time you watch this video so i'm going to stop this session here and in next session i'll i'll be coming with for uh, new fantastic things and uh, keep sharing this with others and comment below in in the description area if you are watching this in facebook group please share your feedback and when you practice copy your piece of code and paste there because that that how you can you'll feel encouraged all right thank you so much thanks for watching this video thank you